Students, we have an interesting lesson to start today that is the making of a scientist. It's written by Robert W. Peterson. It is an interesting account how a boy became a scientist and how a simple book offered casually by her, his mother helped him to become a scientist and what has been the role of his mother in raising up his curiosity towards science and other learning things. When the lesson starts, it has been told that Richard H. Bright gave the theory at the age of 22 how the cell work, cells work. Richard H. Bright explained the theory in an article in the proceeding of the National Academy of Science. The proceeding of the National Academy of Science, it is a journal in which scientific works are published but it, it was for the first time that the work of some students got published in the proceeding of the National Academy of Science and it was just like for Richard Bright that he took part in a game for the first time at the age of 15 and started his game with a home run. In baseball, home run is uh, scored when the ball is hit outside the field and uh, or uh, the player comes back to the same point uh, running all the way from all the base points this is home run so getting an article published in the proceeding of the national academy of science by some student it was just like a home run for those students next it it is told how it all began the writer tells us that it all began with butterflies when richard H. Bright was simply a child he was brought up in the north of reading pennsylvania it is the name of place and uh, there uh, it it is told that uh, richard H. bright could not get many friends to play outdoor games so what he could do was simply to engage himself in the work of collecting the things and this is the work his mother asked him to do and his mother encouraged him. So she bought him telescope, microscope, cameras, etc. to keep, keep his interest up in this all works. So Richard H. Bright was asked to collect the butterflies a different species of butterfly it was the work given by his mother and she spotted him well when he was in the second grade he collected all 25 species of butterflies found around the hometown Richard H. Bright's mother tells that after the death of Richard H. Bright's father Richard was the only concern of her and both of them used to spend the even, you know, all the evenings together at the same dining table and her mother comes forward to tell us that he was very keen to learn a lot of things and she used to give him um, some works and that works too related with the learning only not any physical work she would not offer but she would offer him to uh, take some learning work and she was uh, he was uh, badly interested in those learning works and uh, uh, when he was in the second grade he collected all 25 species of butterfly found around hometown and uh, after the collection of all 25 species Richard H. Bright further needed some work to keep himself engaged. So, his mother 
offered him a book called the travels of monarch x and it was the very book which opened the world of science to richard chabright it became a turning point in richard chabright's life he read the book and in that book written by dr frederick a akuhart an invitation was made to the readers to help study the migration of butterflies this book was about the migration of monarch butterflies it was posed in the book that butterflies migrate with the change in weather so a uh, request was made to readers that they should become a part of this uh, investigation they should become a part of this discovery they were asked to tag butterflies tag monarch butterflies uh, at at their wings and let them fly so uh, it was requested that anyone who found a tag butterfly would send the same the same tag to dr arku hart so that he could keep up with his uh, uh, discovery so richard chabright got busy in tagging the butterflies but uh, it was not easy to find butterflies around him so when he was done with tagging all the butterflies around him he took up another move he <coughs> wished to continue this tagging of butterflies so he took up another step forward he took some butterflies and he caught a female monarch take her eggs and raise them in his basement through the life cycle from egg to caterpillar caterpillar to pupa pupa to adult butterflies then he would tag the butterflies wings and let them go so several years his basement was home to thousands of monarchs in different stages of development so this was the next move he took when he did not find enough monarchs after some times he started losing interest in this uh, also because uh, he did not get enough feedback because whatever butterflies he tagged only two were recaptured and they were not more than 75 miles from where he lived so this was a disheartening thing for richard chabright he was discouraged and lost his interest in collecting and tagging butterflies then he took part in the 7th grade in county science fair he was a loser there he simply had a display of slides of frog tissue under microscope he did not get any prize in that county science fair cause uh, he realized that the students who got some prize they were really doing the real experiment then uh, simply making a display of a few things under microscope as he did so he wrote to dr akuhart about his uh, taking part in the next county fair and asked for some suggestions and Dr. Akuhart replied with a stack of suggestions. In the eighth grade, he took up a project, 
a witch he tried to explain that some viral disease over some years kill small nut caterpillar and it is this viral disease is caused by some some beetle so he took up this project he tried to prove him uh, prove this hypothesis by bringing caterpillar close to that particular beetle but nothing happened but he still proved that he did some experiment and won prize in 8th grade county science fairs project so next year's project he tried to prove that viceroy butterflies copy monarch butterfly because monarchs don't taste good to birds and to save themselves from birds the viceroy butterflies try to copy monarchs so that they may escape birds uh, they may escape becoming food of birds this project got first position in zoology and third position in overall county science fair Richard Chebright did not stop here he continued with his new projects making new challenges to himself making some false hypotheses and then making some discoveries to prove them right so in the second years in high school Chebright began the research that led to an unknown insect hormone a bright began that research because he wanted to prove that the monarch pupa has some 12 gold spots and everybody thought that 12 gold spots are simply an ornamental to butterfly's pupa but he came a step forward to prove that those golden spots are not simply ornamental but they release some particular kind of hormone which is necessary for the full growth of a butterfly he built a device to show some gold spots producing that hormone and this was really a wonderful project and this project won him first prize in county fair a entry into the international science and engineering fair and got a chance to work in army laboratory he was offered to work there so he continued with his research even in high school junior students and then in his high school senior grade he grew cells from monarch's wing and showed that cell would develop into butterfly wing scales only if they get the hormone from the gold spots let me explain once again what was this project the when he was in the senior uh, year of his school he tried to prove that if the cell would not get the hormone which was released from the gold spots then that cells in butterfly's wing would not make the patterns the scales on the wings of butterflies we see uh, many designs on butterfly's wing that is because of the uh, the hormone which is released from the gold spots that is for the uh, supply to the cells of butterfly's wings and because of that hormones when that hormone is uh, received in the cells then cell produce the designs and that patterns on butterfly's wings so this was the project overview then this since this was a wonderful project he got first prize for zoology at the even at the international fair 
Well, next he was uh, shifted in Harvard University because his schooling got over and there he was once again a freshman in the university and he continued with his research to identify the chemical structure of that hormone. It was a step further. Uh, remember the students that uh, uh, he started his uh, research when he wanted to prove that th those golden spots are simply not ornamental but they release some particular kind of hormone which is necessary for the full growth of butterfly and later proved that that hormone when received by the cells help butterflies to have designs, patterns and scales on its wing and now he moved even a step further to identify what is the chemical structure of that hormone. So he's now making step after step forward with the same research that is the same hormone released by the golden spots and now he is about to identify what is the chemical structure of this, those gold, uh, hormones which is released from the golden spot. So, a year and a half later, during his junior year at university, he got the idea of his new theory about cell life. It all happened when he was looking at the x-ray of the chemical structure of a hormone. He is continuing his research on the same hormone but it happened to him what could possibly the theory about cell life. This was a big scientific issue that got solved just simply following a research with the hormone chemical structure. So along with his findings about insects hormone, X-ray gave him the answer to how the cell read the blueprints of its DNA. DNA is a substance that is found in the center of a cell and he is in continuation with the same research and uh, making progress with the same research and instantly we can say suddenly this new research came to his mind that DNA is in the center of a cell and how a cell reads that DNA and then behave develop make growth accordingly this was a big scientific issue that got solved and this was then that Bright and his uh, roommate James R. Wong remained up at all the night and drew a lot of pictures and even made plastic models to prove how it could happen and how this all work and finally they wrote the paper theory which was published in the proceedings of the national academy of science the same journal that used to publish the work of great scientists but it was for the first time that it published the work of some students because it was of great value in the scientific field so Richard H. Bright became a researcher at Harvard and kept on with his experiments and it is supposed that his experiments might lead on preventing some more diseases if uh, they prove to be successful and finally in the end of the lesson the ingredients had been explained as to what had been the ingredients of 
behind Richard H. Bright's as becoming a scientist. Richard H. Bright as a person had been like any normal person. He had a lot of interest in science but besides science he had a lot of other interest he had been a debater he had been a good speaker he had been a good canoeist and uh, he had been an expert photographer uh, of nature and scientific exhibits so he had a normal life since he began his life uh, having some interest in science right from his childhood so while pursuing his life like any other normal person pursuing uh, interest in uh, other fields also he happened to become a scientist cause he started his preparation right from his childhood so it was not the bothersome job like that uh, he started putting all the efforts and leaving out other things to uh, focus on one and only thing that is to become scientist no he had been following his other interests like any normal person living a normal life not worried or single minded about the same job he was not like that he prepared well and finally happened to become a scientist and uh, it has been the advice of a writer to all readers that if some persons have some goals he should start his preparation well in advance so that he might not need to abandon the rest of his interests so students this was a lesson a very inspiring and nice and a great lesson a piece of advice to readers too so i wish you all to listen to the recording twice and write a summary on the lesson so that the things might set bell in your mind thank you